Hey guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to set up uh, the crouching state and finish our idle to crouch. Well, our idle and crouch idle animations. Set that up. So, in our locomotion folder in Anim Blueprint. So, let's open up ABP Locomotion and let's just head back to the Anim Graph so we can see exactly where I'm going with this. So in the locomotion state, in our idle state, idle turn state, and then in our idle, we are going to be replacing this animation idle ready with a sequence player. So right click and search sequence player. This one. And what we're going to do is, um, let's expose the play rate. So expose a spin. I'm just gonna promote this to a variable. This is my preference. If you have, if you're satisfied with your animation's speed, then you know that's fine. But for me, I'm gonna uh, have this parameter that I can adjust if I like it, the speed or not. So now I'm gonna create a on update binding. I'm simply gonna call this update idle animation. Right, so from here, it's really simple. Uh, all you need to do is get, well, convert the node to sequence player. Convert to sequence player, yeah, like so. Then we wanna say set sequence with initial blending. This one, connect this up. We need a context, so drag off and let's just say get context. The return node uh, connects right here. Really short, nice function. And you can do a select from the sequence. From here, all we need to do is get our crouch boolean variable. Get and slot it as the index, it will replace this. And now we just simply need to call the crouch idle and stand idle animation. So I'm going to create another struct for this. So head to your structs folder, right click, blueprints, structure, and call this st underscore idle anims. I'm going to open this up. Now we're going to create two anim sequences. So change the first variable to an anim sequence, object reference, like so. And I'm going to name the first one stand idle and the other one crouch idle. I'm going to save this and in our animation blueprint, let's create a new variable. I'm going to call this idle anims. And the, the variable type is going to be of our ST idle anims structure. Now we're going to get the structure. Split the struct pin and for our stand idle will be up here and for our, if crouch is true it will call our crouch idle animation. Straighten this out and I'm just going to place it right here. Nice. Compile and that error should have gone away but it did not. Uh, let's see sequence player references is now and sequence base. Okay, so yeah, set this value to be a dynamic value and that error should go away. Nice, so now what we need to do is set our idle animations. Again, head to class defaults, head to idle anims, and I'm simply going to search for idle. So I'm going to slot in the idle ready for standing and crouch idle for crouching. If I compile now, he should go back into the idle state and nothing should go wrong so yeah you can still turn in place and transitions back to the idle state nice now let's create a transition from idle to crouching so back 
in our locomotion state from this idle state we are going to create a transition and add a new state so this state is going to be stance transition right so the first transition it's going to be really simple uh, we're going to open this up highlight this result and we're going to click on this little pin here for can enter transition and we're going to select our crowd state changed boolean variable you can come back here and your transition we have a few values to set up to keep things clean um oh by the way if you guys had any issues at all with the um turn in place animations and how clean it should be transitioning i really apologize for this but i added a initialization node here you can simply right click and search initialization and slot that right here uh in the idle state here in the idle turn state for this transition uh back up to from return recovery to, to enter turn you can change the blend logic to initialization and that should be all now back into our idle well our locomotion state for this transition to the stance from the idle to stance transition what we're going to do is change the duration to 0.35 and change the blend logic to initialization right compile save we're going to create another transition from stance transition to idle this one is going to be um initialization as well with a priority order of two and the duration is going to be 0.25 nice next uh no, my bad my bad uh no yeah i'm correct so this set automatic based automatic rule based on sequence player in state set that to be true and next we're going to create another transition from stance transition to idle not this one that we already created the other one and we're going to open it up and we're going to highlight this and do the same thing like on the other side click this little pin and select crouch state changed now we have one more function to create which is within the stance transition state so all we need to do here is create the sequence player expose the pin for the play rate and we're going to plug in our play rate variable by default it's set to one and we're going to plug this up right here i like this and i'm going to set the buying for the sequence to a dynamic value straighten everything out hit compile and save now if we select this sequence player here we are going to uh, override one of these functions the function that we're going to override is give me a sec on become relevant i'm going to create a new binding i'm going to call this setup idle transition right now in here it's pretty similar to the, to the last function so i'm gonna from the node i'm gonna convert to sequence player and set sequence not set sequence with inertial blending we're gonna just simply call set sequence and from here we are going to uh from the sequence we're going to say select and we're going to get our crouch variable again and plug it up 
So for we need these two animations. Um, we simply need to call the return node here, by the way. And in the structure folder, we're going to create another one. So I'm simply going to duplicate this st idle anims, and I'm going to call it idle transitions. I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to scroll. I'm going to call crouch entry and crouch exit. Save. We're going to create another variable here for the idle transitions. So I'm going to call this crouch transition. It's going to be of type st uh, idle transition. Compile and save. Now in our set up idle transition, we're going to get this crouch transition variable. We're going to split the struct bin and uh, obviously we're going to check if crouching is true then we play the entry animation and if crouching is false then we play the exit animation i'm simply going to uh, reorder this to keep things neat like so place this right here compile and save and that is all now all we need to do is slot in our animations so I'm going to scroll down, head to my idle anims, uh, the crouch transition anims, and I'm going to search for crouch. I'm going to get the crouch entry and the crouch exit. Now in our components, I'm going to open this up. In our event graph, I'm going to simply hit the 8 key on the keyboard. And I'm going to click this little keyboard here and hit the key on my keyboard C. So this is where I will enter the crouching state. From here, I want to, I'm simply going to copy this actually from my update gate function. Copy this, get component by class and get owner, paste. And I need to check if crouch, So only if crouching is false, then we need to get owner cast to character, convert this to a pure cast, and we're going to say crouch. Actually, I'll show you a better way to set this up. So for now, we're simply going to call crouch. And let's say a flip-flop. What a flip-flop does is once you hit the input, once it will call A. If you hit it again, it will call B. So from here, we're going to say uncrouch. And we're going to hit the top right here. We're going to create uh, some checks in the next video. Compile, save. And now, if I hit C, you can see nothing happens. That is because the character movement component does not know that he can. So select, open up our uh, third person character, select our character movement component, and we're gonna search for crouch. And we're gonna set can crouch to true. And then we're gonna select our camera boom and we're gonna enable camera lag. Compile and save. And now you can see he enters and exits the transition from crouch idle and stand idle. And he can turn in place as well. Uh, if you want to test your crouch turn in place, that is already set up as well. So yeah. Alright, that's it for this one. See ya.